Hello and welcome to another Overlord Law video and today we are going to take a look at why Ein Sulgon had been so disappointed with the power of New World S. But before we are going to take a look at why Eins was so disheartened with this disguised member of the Sunlight Scripture, let's take a look at my Patreons and thank them for supporting this channel. Furthermore, I say thank you to all users of the YouTube Thanks function who made one-time donations. Furthermore, I have also recently opened a fantasy channel where I'm talking about, you guessed it, more fantasy concepts. If you're interested in this, please head over to it. I will upload roughly one video a month. So I'm staying focused for now on my main channel and on Overlord. And with that said, let's finally continue. Eins Olgon's first real fight outside the Great Tomb of Nazarick had been with the members of the Sunlight Scripture, disguised as two Imperial Knights from the Empire of Baharut, and they were hunting down Enri and her little sister Nemu. But Eins Olgon had intercepted the two chasing the sisters, and he was now prepared to either kill them or withdraw. And his first spell that killed his first knight had been Grasp Heart. And it was his favorite ninth tier spell, because even if this insta death spell would fail, the victim, feeling his heart caressed by an undead hand, would still feel so shocked and overwhelmed that it simply would be stunned for a few seconds after. This meant that if the spell would have failed, the knights could have still withdrawn to a stronghold, but it killed the knight without any effort. Now that it has been established that Ein Solgon was indeed stronger than the remaining knight, and could, if it was necessary, kill him with just one single spell, Eins felt comfortably enough to use a very weak spell, Dragon Lightning, a spell of only the fifth tier, in order to test the strength and durability of the remaining knight. Now Eins expected that the knight would have high lightning resistance, because wearing metal armor that normally is susceptible to lightning, only for the players to fortify it against this very weakness, to near total immunity, in order to disguise a strength as a weakness, was just a common sense strategy in the endgame meta of Yggdrasil Online. And Einzelgun himself has in fact also applied this very strategy to his very own gear, for it granted him an Undead, normally weak to fire, a 100% immunity to fire-based damage. Later in his fight against Cheltie, pretending to be still immune to fire and weak to holy magic, while in truth, Eins had already switched gear, in order to now be immune to holy magic and weak against fire-based damage was also something quite common in PvP matches. But wait, there's more. Ein Solgo not only used Dragon Lightning, a spell of the fifth tier, something we later learn even normal New World humans could potentially use. He also purposefully left it weak and with low power. Now Ein Solgo as an undead overlord specialized in death magic, which means that elemental attacks were not his main strength. But he also didn't use meter magic because normally Eins would maximize and triple a spell. And tripling simply means that one will cast one spell three times in just a split second, which makes it much more devastating. But not only can Eins raise the quantity of his spell, but also the quality of it. By maximizing, a damage output that for example could range from 1 to 20, will always inflict the maximum amount of damage of 20, thus not only maximizing the spell's strength, but also removing any RNG and luck-based factors, something very important in the later endgame of Yggdrasil. So Eins could be sure that he had casted a very weak spell against what he presumed was still a reasonably strong target, only to find out that a single hit of this low-tier, unaugmented magic was more than enough to deep fry a knight, and knights could be assumed to be professional soldiers, and although Eins didn't know it yet, this man was even more, because he was also a member of the slain theocracy Sunlight Scripture. So by Eins Ulgorn's own expectation, this knight should certainly represent some very, very excellent specimens 
of the average new world, the higher end of the combat strength of the new world. And yet he died so easily. This in turn gave Eins Ulgon the confidence necessary to proceed with his rescue mission. And it also at least in part explained why Eins Ulgon was corked so off guard by Sheltier being mind controlled. Fighting weak foes, like more distinguished members of the Sunlight Scripture, the rest of the Sunlight Scripture, the supposed highest level of angel, and then later some goblins, ogres, and what was supposed to be the wise king of the forest, had just lulled him into a false sense of security. But as Eins learned, there are still a few fairly potent enemies in the new world around, and in the 15th and 16th novel, we will see a couple of them in action. But as far as normal new worlders are concerned, they are all together beneath the might of Eins old Gone. And with that said, I say thank you very much for watching and special thanks to Dash 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 Bad Guy Yi Ben C Chrissy Crowley 0221 Sia Dead Slime Death is Mercy Deathless Dragonlord Demon Xenomorph 1987 Devon Downen Duck Wagon Dystopia Dystopia the Second Enigmatic Unicorn The Ralshivan Guy with That Hat Hector Marino Hoss Huster Jacob G Jana B Jason Chromius Legendarius Lelouch Free Britannia with a Mustache Lexus Fox Lord Nishikian Rai Lord Touch Me Merovec Mr. Shoes Mr. Tweaker Michael R Michael Y Normal Toad Oakill Overlord General Gasper Paddy Pantom Personage Primus Eleven Shergox is Daddy <laughs> Shadow Lightning Wolf Shrine Keeper Staris Ted Texas Deer The Orc Warboss Rock Ed Smasher T.E. Wang Vash Hawkeye Vegito 27 Venture Fanatic Wilhelm and Zonagon. Thanks guys. Anyway, have a nice day and I hope to see you all again soon under my next video.